as I live. I will praise my God while I have my May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Alleluia. The second reading today is a letter from Paul to the Romans. Chapter 8, verses 22 through 27. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asked me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away... The Advocate will not come to you, but if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer, about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of our, my mouth, the meditation of our hearts, be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. 
In this morning's gospel, we hear Jesus talking to his disciples about when he leaves them. That he's going away and that it's actually very good for them and that he will not leave them alone. That he's going to leave them with an advocate. So today is Pentecost, otherwise known as the birthday of the church. The colors are red, representing the fire of the Holy Spirit. And each year it's celebrated 50 days after Easter. It commemorates the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the disciples. It's also called Whit Sunday, which in earlier years the church baptized its new members. And they all wore white, indicating purity and new birth. The Pentecost celebration is also related to the Jewish harvest festival, which is called Shavuot, which was and is a celebration of God's giving Moses the Ten Commandments. And that's why the people, the disciples were all together in Jerusalem on this day. So I'm going to start off with what's an advocate? So I googled it. One who pleads the cause of another before a tribunal or a judicial court. One who defends or maintains a cause. One who supports or promotes the interest of a cause or a group. Okay, put that aside. Now, what does the Bible say about the Holy Spirit? In Romans, as Sue read a few minutes ago, it says, likewise, The Spirit helps us in our weaknesses, for we do not know how to pray as we ought to. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. So said another way, The Holy Spirit is our advocate, our helper, our comforter, our counselor. These different words for the Holy Spirit are probably words that you've heard in the past. And they all basically mean the same thing. They derive from the Greek word called paraclete, which is another name for Holy Spirit, comforter, counselor, advocate. Those are all ways in this Greek word paraclete can be translated. This morning's reading, we hear of the word advocate. So, when you go home today, you can brag to the neighbors that you now know Greek. You know one word, paraclete, means helper, advocate, comforter, counselor. So that's what this day is, Pentecost is all about. It's about the risen and ascended Lord Jesus Christ sending the paraclete, the advocate, the Holy Spirit to the church, we the church, in several ways. So how is the Holy Spirit our advocate? Well, the reading that Father Harvey just read says this, the advocate will go alongside us, the advocate will glorify Jesus, and the advocate will guide us into all truth. So I want to break each one of those down briefly. So first, the Holy Spirit will go alongside us. In this morning's Gospel reading, Jesus tells his disciples that he's going to send the Holy Spirit to them very soon. This causes his disciples a ton of distress, hearing that their master is about to leave them. But Jesus reassures them that it's actually for their own good, that he's going away, and he sees And he says to them, I will not leave you comfortless. And the big part of that reassurance and comfort is that he sends them the Holy Spirit, who will be with them and will go alongside them. This conversation began back a chapter in chapter 14, where Jesus says to them, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever even the spirit of truth. This is the first place that we hear that word, paraclete, to refer to the Holy Spirit. 
And in this context, it's translated as helper. But it can also be comforter, counselor, and advocate, as we've mentioned. In this word, paraclete, also means in Greek, one who is called to be alongside you. The idea of like, when you call somebody over and you say, hey, could you come over and give me a little help? And then that person comes alongside you and is your helper. That's what a paraclete was in those ancient worlds. And this is what Jesus says the Holy Spirit will be for all of the disciples, and by extension for us. He will be our paraclete, our helper forever. So this paraclete, this helper, this Holy Spirit, is going to be with us throughout our entire lives to keep us in our Christian faith, to guide us and to guard us, and to help us grow. So secondly, the Holy Spirit will glorify Jesus. He said, he will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Or again, he will bear witness about me. See, that's the Holy Spirit's job, to shine the light on Jesus, to glorify Christ. You know, sometimes we might wonder why scripture doesn't say too much about the Holy Spirit. And it's truly hard for me to get my mind around the Holy Spirit. Because we just don't read enough about the Holy Spirit as we do about Jesus and about God. Jesus is the focus. The Holy Spirit is the helper, the advocate, the counselor. I liken it to this. It's like your car is out in the parking lot. You've been shopping at the Holyoke Mall all day until you dropped. Well, when you come out, it's dark out. You can't find your car. Someone comes along with a flashlight and they lead you to your car. They shine the light on your car. You would not have found that car without that flashlight, but you never saw the face of the person because they were shining the light on the flashlight. That's kind of how the Holy Spirit works. The Holy Spirit, we don't notice as much because the Holy Spirit's job is to shine the flashlight on Jesus. And each week, in a few minutes, we're going to say words like this. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. Then we're going to say, oh, we believe in the Holy Spirit. Okay. That's where the Holy Spirit comes in. It's the glue that binds us to our faith. It's the glue that keeps us bound together. The Holy Spirit works through the means of grace. The preaching, the teaching of the gospel, the administration of the sacraments, all help us to bring us to the faith in Christ and keep us strong until the day we die. Always remember the flashlight, which now leads us to our third point. The Holy Spirit will guide us in all truth. Again, that's what Jesus told his disciples. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak and will declare it to you, all the things that are to come. So, when you listen for God, when you truly listen, you will hear the words of God, because those are the only words the Holy Spirit teaches and talks. The Holy Spirit speaks the words of God. The Spirit of truth will guide you into all truth. We live in a world today where nobody seems to be sure that there is a such thing as truth. Truth, we're told, is whatever happens to be true for you. That's your truth. And I guess that's fine. Truth becomes relative. But that's all subjective. 
It's shaky and it's uncertain. The factual truth is, there is such a thing as objective truth, absolute truth. Pretty simple. Truth is whatever God says in his word. Have a nice day. That's what we can be sure of. That's what is certain and firm. And that's what we can build our lives on. Namely, on God's holy word. So a sidebar here. If you want to seek the real truth, listen for the voice of God. Sit in silence. Meditate and think on God. Read scripture. That's the truth the disciples of Jesus needed to hear. P.S. Here we are. We don't necessarily need to turn into Fox News, CNN, Facebook, or any other media outlets. If we want to know how things really stand between God and man, if we want to know what's right and wrong in this world from God's perspective, which is the only one that really counts, if we want to know the things that are to come, where this world is headed, then the one place to find out is in God's word and amongst God's people. The advocate, the helper, the counselor, the Holy Spirit will guide us into all that truth. He will open the scriptures for us. And as we grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus, as we continue to come to church, Bible study, morning prayer, healing services, and grow in our understanding of God's word, it will be the Holy Spirit who will be guiding us throughout this process. So today, on this great festive day, the day of Pentecost, we celebrate and rejoice in the fact that Christ has given us the gift of the Holy Spirit. He is our helper, our advocate, our counselor. So we've looked at three ways of how the Holy Spirit can help us. He will go alongside us, he will glorify Jesus, and he will guide us into all truth. But the truth is, this Holy Spirit, no matter who tries to explain it to me, I have a hard time getting my mind around it. But I can get my mind around the fact that God can do anything and God can be anything. So I go on faith. I do believe in something I cannot see, feel, or touch. Because I see the work of the Holy Spirit in this room and amongst you. Amen. And now please stand as you are able, and let's affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, which you can find on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. Again, that's page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue now with the prayers of the people. Prayers of the people can be found on page 388, Reform 4. And the response will be here, our prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that may, we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them the courage and hope in their, in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. And our, our altar flowers and candle today are in loving memory of Pat Kravietz from the Clapp family. Um, the candle also is in memory of her. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them be, may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Also today, we'd like to pray for the 2021 Diocesan Cycle of Prayer for Trinity Church Milford, and clergy living beyond the diocese, and for the Episcopal Women's History Project and the New England Synod of the ELCA. For our 2021 St. David's Parish Prayer Cycle, we pray today for the Prayer Shawl Ministry, Kimberly Paquette and family, the Parot Keeley family, and the Parots. For the nations of the world today, we pray for Mexico and Micronesia. And on our own personal prayer list today, we pray for Mary, for Beth, Rose, John, Jimmy, Erica, Jan, Megan, Linda, Pat, Katie, Mary, Susan, the Norton family as they grieve. And in Thanksgiving, we're very thankful for our best three for the leadership that they provide and because they are fun. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now please stand as you're able for the peace. And remembering that we, we're still continuing to peace in place, but the peace of the Lord be always with you. So let us smile and wave and nod and bow. So good to see you all. And then be seated again as uh, Terry sets the altar.
Please stand as you are able, and we'll continue in just a moment with Eucharistic Prayer A, which begins on page 361. We do have a birthday to prayer over this week, and so if you'd like to join me in the birthday prayer, and that, that could be on the screen, but it's also on page 830 in the Book of Common Prayer. And this is, uh, it's, we're coming up on Bob Glista's birthday. So let us pray. Watch over thy child, O Lord, as his days increase. Bless and guide him wherever he may be. Strengthen him when he stands. Comfort him when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise him up if he falls. And in his heart may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of his life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And I say now, continuing on page 361 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Continuing now with the preface. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down on this day from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. 
And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Please stand as you're able for the post-communion prayer, and you can, which can be, you can find on page 365 in the Book of Common Prayer. Again, that's page 365. And please join me. Let us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Thanks be to God. 